Hey, what's up, Algebra 1? Mr. Catlin here. I told you that I would post a video to help you study for your test that you're going to have tomorrow. And I try to deliver when I tell you I'm going to do something. Uh, I've got in my hands the test. Woo! Uh, and so what I thought I'd do is I'd just make up some problems that look like these on this blank grid paper. Talk about it and go through the test problem by problem. And that way you have some idea of what's going to be on it. Okay, so here we go. The first question is one of those where you have like the steps of growth in the quadratic. So, for example, uh, step one and step two and step three. And it's been a while since we've done these, but they're not hard. Uh, so, like, so let's say, for example, the first step is uh, it's a square like this and a square like that. And the second step is uh, a square like this. And then uh, I'm going to draw it like that. another pair of squares attached. And then the last one is a square that looks like this. And then they attach uh, another set like this. Okay, so like this pattern right here is quadratic, and I know it's quadratic because it all grows by a larger square every time that we get to the next step. So like this one is one by one square, a two by two square, a three by three square. And every time that they go up by another length of square based upon this, uh, they have a little bit extra tacked on, right? So like if we did one squared, we'd get one and that's the purples. If we did two squared, that's four and that's the purples. If we did step three squared and we'd have nine and that would be the purples. But we always add more than just whatever we had. So like we always added one there and we added two there, we added three, it seems to be going up. But if we were to really put it into a form, it's you square X, which is your step, right? And after you square the X, you add one, two, and three, which is the step number. So this one would be X squared plus X. And it would work in all of the situations. Uh, one squared plus one uh, plus X is one would be two. Uh, two squared, four plus two would give me the six squares that are there. And three squared, which is three by three is nine. Add three more and you would have the 12 squares that are there. So it works for all the steps. We could tell what step uh, 15 would be, we just have to square it, right? We would do 15 squared and we would add 15. And that would be 225 plus 15, 240. There'd be 240 boxes in that one because this is quadratic, okay? So recognizing the quadratic pattern of squares building, and then if they add or take away, sometimes they take away stuff, sometimes they add stuff, just be on the lookout for, uh, there's two questions like that, okay? where there's building of steps, look for the squares, and that pattern should be pretty obvious when you do that, okay? All right, so there's two problems like that. So that handles number one and number two, I think. If you understand the step growth and quadratics and squares, you're always going to have an X squared, just like we have with quadratics, uh, which kind of leads us into number three, really. Number three uh, is just uh, you have to type in or write down your answer. And the question is just telling is asking you to tell me the difference between a quadratic function and an exponential function. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm just going to tell you what you need to know for this one, and you need to memorize it, or you just need to know it moving forward. All right, so it's the it's the quadratic functions which we're studying now versus exponential, which we studied last unit. What are the key differences? Well, quadratic functions have x squared. Exponential functions have x in the exponent. That's a big difference, okay? Quadratics grow by building squares. There's no growth factor, but exponential functions have a growth factor, which in this case, the example that I used was two, right? Times two, times two, times two, times two, times two. Quadratics don't do that. Uh, graphically, quadratics will be parabolas like this or like that, right? Graphically, exponential functions will look like this, or they'll look like this, right? So there's a difference graphically. They're symmetrical over here, not so much over here. Uh, there's a difference with uh, the growth factors and the uh, equations and what they look like. 
Okay. So there's, there's a lot of differences between the two. You can talk about them. Also, over time, as X gets bigger, which of these two will win? Which one will have higher outputs as X increases? We had a big discussion about this. Exponentials always win. They always end up winning. I'm trying to go fast here, guys, because I don't want you to have to watch like a 35-minute video. Okay, so that's number three. It's like straight up, you just need to know that information. Number four. Okay, number four looks like you're just going to use your uh, rectangular box method or your FOIL method to write a quadratic expression into standard form. So example, I'll just do x minus 5 times x plus 3. You need to know how to change this either by FOIL, all right, which is one method, but uh, for this video I will use the rectangle method of finding out what their product would be. So we would have x minus 5 on one, and then we have x plus 3 on the other. x times x is x squared. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x. 3 times x is 3x. And 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. But this will not suffice. You need to take this, combine your like terms of your two x terms that are in the middle, all right, take all four of your terms, line them up, combine yours that are alike, which would be this term and this term, right? And then everything else just kind of stays on the bookends. x squared uh, minus 2x from when you do negative 5 plus 3 and minus 15. So you need to be able to show that this in standard form is the same as that in factored form expression. Okay? You need to be able to go from one to the other. Whether you sh And you've got to show your work. You can't just write that down. Okay, I need to see that you multiply them out in FOIL or draw this picture. All right, if you don't show your work, you will not get full credit. It says show your work on the test. You got to be able to show it. Number five. All right, the fifth problem on the test is the same thing. The only difference is they add a little bit of a tweak to it. So like, I'm going to make up an example. 5x plus 3 times... Uh, x plus 1, something like that, okay? You have to FOIL this. You have to prove this is equal to its standard form. So in that problem, you know they give you this. They tell you what the final result is. You just got to show your work of why they're the same, okay? And the only tweak to this one is I've got a coefficient in front of this x, and that throws some kids off. Uh, I'll do FOIL for this one, okay? So this one I'll do FOIL. First is 5x and x, okay, 5x times x. Outside would be 5x and 1. Inside would be 3 and x. And last would be 3 and 1. So we take all of those products and we add them together. 5 times x times x is two factors of x, so x squared. 5 times 1 is 5. 3 times x is 3x. And 3 times 1 is 3. And then you would just need to show that, okay, 5x squared plus 8x plus 3 is the same as the standard form that you showed me in the beginning of this problem. By showing your work, by either FOIL or you could use your diagram like I did here. Either way. Just be on the lookout for that coefficient. It does affect your first term. Okay. So that's problem number 5. Problem number 6. Okay. Uh, it looks like uh, it's a rocket. All right, so I'll sketch this graph. Can try to do this fairly quickly. Okay, so I've got a uh, number line here, and I need a line, not a... So here we go. All right, so there's my x-axis, my y-axis. Let's say my y-axis is counting by tens. Okay, so I'll say this is 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, oh, not 500, 50. Okay, so this is, I don't know, I'm just going to say it's meters or whatever. It gives you a graph. It labels things. Uh, and then down here we have time in seconds. One second, two second, three seconds, four seconds, so on and so forth. All right, 
I'll stop at eight. All right, and then it draws a parabola. All right, so this is probably not going to look very good, but I'm going to try my best for you guys, okay? So let's say that the parabola hits, um, let's make this easy for myself. Let's go with three, all right? And then let's say that it goes maybe something like this. So it's going to go a little bit past the six mark and probably land like, I don't know, maybe like right here or something. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go like that. All right. So this is toy rocket flight or something like that. And uh, let's say that this is our at 40. I don't know what it might be. It looks kind of more like three and a half. I started at three, but I'm going to change it to three and a half now. It looks like more, it's more at three and a half than it is at three. So I'm going to say that's my... Uh, that's my vertex. Okay, so toy rocket flight, and then it's going to ask you questions like, uh, where was the toy rocket launched from? At what height? And we should know that that's going to be at the y-intercept. So we would say uh, somewhere between 5 and 10. And they'll ask, it'll be like, all right, you should know what else is true. You should know uh, the maximum height, uh, what that rocket got to. And you wouldn't say that it reached that height at 40 seconds. You would say it reached it at three and a half seconds, right? You would say at 3.5 seconds, this rocket reached 40 foot tall, right? And this number right here on the X axis has importance as well. And this is when it hits the ground. So if you understand that general idea of graphing, then you'll be fine, okay? These numbers are all made up. Nothing like what's on the test, but the general idea. If you watch this video, hopefully that will help you. All right, moving on to the next one. Uh, the next one is another quadratic that you have to FOIL, but it has negatives. So I'll do an example of those. You have to do something like 5x minus 3 times 3x minus 2. That's very similar to what's there. So I'll do that. Uh, I'll go back to the rectangle method for this one. Okay, so I'm going to set up 5x and negative 3 on one link and 3x and negative 2 on the other link, length times width. 5x times 3x is 15x squared. 5x times negative 2 is negative 10x. 3x times negative 3 is negative 9x. And negative times a negative is a positive. So when I get all of those multiplications out, and what I want to do is I want to write them out 15x squared minus 10x minus 9x plus 6. Then I want to put my like terms together in the middle. So I get 15x squared minus 19x plus 6. And that would be that. And that one says show your work either with a diagram or with foil. So whichever strategy that you like best. Okay. That was like number 7 on the test okay number eight number eight asks you to find the x-intercepts when I give you a function that looks like this x minus 12 and x plus I'm going to do four what are the x-intercepts and what are the y-intercepts? And I gave it to you in factored form, as you can tell from the times in, by the two parentheses groups. So factored form is set up perfectly for x-intercepts. But remember, when you do x-intercepts from factored form, it's what makes those groupings equal zero. Okay? So what number would make this equal zero? 12. So one of the x-intercepts would be 12, 0 right? And the other one, what would make this group equal zero? It would be negative four. So that's the other. These are the pairs of x-intercepts, okay? The two numbers that make these two groups in factored form equal zero, okay? As I'm doing this, I'm going to kind of sketch the graph so you can kind of get an idea of what's happening. We know that at a 12, so I'll count by fours here, four, eight, there's 12, 
and negative 4. These are my intercepts, right? I know it's going to cross there, and I know it's going to cross there. Now, my y-intercepts can be found from this if I FOIL it out and look at the constant. There's also a shortcut for this as long as your constants are in the last portion. But I'll work it out. And x and 4. We get x squared from the first. The outside, the inside are both x's. We're only really focused on the last term, which would be negative 48. And if I'm counting by fours, that would be the twelfth one. So it'd be way down here. So two, one, two, like way down here. But at negative, I'll just count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Here's, here's 50. So here's, here's negative 48. I know that it goes through that mark and that mark. And it would kind of look like this. And it would probably get a little bit lower in between. And this is something I'll mention right now. The vertex would not be at the y-intercept at negative 48. It would be halfway between these two numbers, which would be halfway between negative 4 and positive 12, which is not 6. Okay, you got to add that there's 12 here and there's 4 there, so there's 16 between these, right? And so the halfway point would be 8. Not at 8, but 8 back from 12 which 8 back from 12 would be at 4. This at 4, um, 4 is your, you could plug that in here and here. So 4 minus 12, that's negative 8. 4 plus 4, negative 8 times 8 would be negative 64. Like at 4, negative 64. It does not ask for the vertex with this problem, but I'm just throwing that in there. And something like that might come up on a later one. Okay. But you just got to tell me the y-intercept, which would be 0, negative 48 in this case. I went a little bit further than I needed to. But if you have factored form, you should be able to give me x is intercepts, the halfway point, which is your uh, value for your x. You could plug in and get your vertex. And also you can get the y-intercept by multiplying your two constant terms, negative 12 times 4. Okay, We did an entire worksheet over that. All right. And that's just a quick example of doing those types of problems. All right, number nine. Number nine <clears throat> is a problem where I give you a pair of factors and you have to find the x-intercepts, just like we did. But this one has a little bit of a twist, so I'm going to show you that twist. Uh, one of them is like x minus 6. But the other one is like 3x plus 9 or something like that. Okay, so if this was a function and I asked you to tell me what the x-intercepts were, this one would be easy because 6 would make that 0. 6 comma 0 would be one of the intercepts, right? This one, on the other hand, is a little bit trickier because uh, you don't just go with negative 9, all right? We need something that will make this equal 0. So what makes this equal 0? To make this parenthesis group equal 0 will be where our graph will cross the x-axis. So I set up the equation. What will make this 3x plus 9 equal 0? And then I solve it. Subtract 9 from both sides. And then divide both sides by 3. And negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3. So this one would cross at negative 3 comma 0. There you go. There you go. All right? So that's how you do a problem when you have to find the intercepts of two numbers that are in factored form. And one of them is not like a perfect x minus or x plus something. you got to work it out when it equals zero. Okay? you got to know how to do that. So watch that part, and hopefully that will help. All right, number 10. All right, three more problems. Number 10 is a table where I give you an equation. Okay, I give you, or I want you to find the x-intercept, and then I want you to find the x-coordinate of the vertex. So it's kind of like what I was alluding to earlier, but a little bit simple of a version. Okay, I'm going to do a couple of examples. Let's say that you have x times x plus 4 as an equation, and another one is, I'll do this one. Oh yeah, I like this one. Okay, so... Uh, x 
minus 3 and x plus 2. Okay, and these are y equals. Okay, so you've got your equation. They're in factored form. So x-intercept should be a piece of cake for us. All right, and then the x-coordinate vertex, we'll talk about that. Okay, so um, let's start with drawing a coordinate grid. So we'll have a reference to these when we have to talk about it. Okay, so the first one right here, what makes these two factors equal zero? Well, the first one that you guys are going to know is this one because you're used to seeing the groupings like this. Negative four is one of them, right? Well, the other there's another one because this factor right here, x, is a factor. And what makes x equal zero? Just put zero in x's place. So these are the two numbers where your grids would be, okay? Negative one, two, three, four is right here, and zero is right there. The vertex coordinate will always be halfway between them and that's going to be at negative two for that one okay that one's a piece of cake the second one's a little bit more tricky let me walk you through it okay let me take these off draw a line here for the y-axis okay so the next one the next one what numbers make this equal zero well i have to plug a three in for that one and i'd have to plug in a negative two for that one okay now the tricky part on this one is the vertex okay that was not hard one two three is here one two is right there all right what is the halfway point between these two dots well these dots are one two three four five units apart right well halfway between five is 2.5 and that would be right there right if I go back 2.5 from 3, I land right here, which is at 1 half. Okay? The x coordinate of the vertex would be at 1 half. Okay? You guys can do that. I know it's a little tougher, but you can do that. They're 5 apart. Halfway would be 2.5 this way, 2.5 that way. And if you come back 3, minus 2.5, you get 0 0.5, or what I wrote, a half. Okay? So that's one of the problems. All right, we're, we're getting down to the nitty-gritty here. We're almost done. Number 11. Number 11. Here's where we go. Uh, y equals x squared is shown. All right? So they give you a graph, and they're like, hey, here's y equals x squared. What you guys should know y equals x squared is, I uh, see they count by 2, so 2, 4, 6, 8, so on and so forth, all the way across. So if I have x squared on there, and these are 2's as well, 2, 4, 6, 8, uh, 2 squared is 4, and 4 squared is uh, 16, which would be off the graph, right? So you've got like this kind of thing going on. And negative 2 squared would be positive 4 as well. And it's going to kind of come up like this also. Okay. So you've got y equals x squared graphed. All right. And what they're going to do is they're going to give you two equations that you have to graph on here as well. And they're both in standard form. And they're very simple. All right. So I'll give you an example of what one of them might look like. One of them might look like y equals x squared minus 6. And the other one might look like y equals negative x squared plus 5. These are easy quadratics to graph. All right. The fact that this is x squared and positive means it's going to open and look just like this one. But that minus 6 in the constant place is going to drag and translate your vertex down to negative 2, 4, and 6. Okay? And it's going to look exactly like this one. It's just going to be starting at a lower spot. Okay? So this one right here would be y equals x squared minus 6. And then there's another one that has a slight change. 
you have a negative in front of your x squared, which should tell you the negative coefficient, this parabola is going to open downward instead of upward. And the plus 5 is telling you to shift your vertex up 5 along the y-axis. So I'll do this one in blue. 2, 4, there's 5. And instead of opening upward like the others, it's going to come down as such. And so all you have to do is sketch that. That's it. And I believe it says label. So you would label this as your y equals negative x squared plus 5. Okay, so know what the coefficient does and know what the number added to it does as well. And the last problem on the test covers vertex form, which was the last thing that we did in this unit. All right, so problem number 12, it has you, it gives you, all right, so it gives you a graph. So you're going to have a graph like this, and it's going to draw a parabola on that graph. All right, so the parabola might look something like uh, they count by ones. So let's say that you have a parabola that has, let's go back, one, two, three, four, up to. Let's say that you have a parabola there, and the vertex is at negative four, two. All right, and it opens downward and does something like this. And all you've got to go on, other than knowing the vertex, is a list of possible equations. And every one of those equations is in vertex form. Okay? Which means you're going to have a y equals, you're going to have a group that's being squared, and you're going to have a plus or minus. Now, the one that I just drew on there, you should know right now that because of that y being a 2, you're going to have a 2 added to shift it. And translate it up to the vertex. The fact that it's upside down tells you that you're going to have a negative sign out in front because that flips it. Okay? And if you want to get back and shift to negative four where this thing is, then you need to have a plus four inside the group because we learned today in class that that uh, is backwards of where the shift actually goes. So if that says x plus 4, it takes you back 4. So you're looking for that as your match. You would match this vertex form to that graph. And I think you guys will be able to do that because that uh, the matching thing that we did in class today went really well. And I think you guys are going to do fantastic on this test. Sorry about the length of the video, but I hope it was helpful for you guys. Uh, good luck on it tomorrow when you take it.